Hey guys, my son and I wanted to share this video with you because we made our very first gates slash fence type of project and we think someone might find it useful so um, we wanted to show you how we made it and maybe it will give you some confidence to make your own project. So let us show you how we made it. Yep. As you can see the right side of the fence was lopsided and in desperate need of removal. Alright, it's demolition time. So my son began unscrewing all the hardware and taking apart the fence. In order to successfully pull off a job like this, it requires lots of tools. But it's not the amount of tools that you have, it's how you use the ones you got. So instead of renting a bunch of tools like jackhammer, we just decided to use our sledgehammer to break up the small piece of concrete. By removing the slab of concrete, it'll allow us to raise the fence by approximately two inches and it'll level out the fence in relationship to my neighbor's fence. So once we removed all the fence posts, it was time to get some square tubing. Let's go get some heavy metal. I went to my local metal supply warehouse and I purchased enough square tubing to build me some heavy duty gates. For our main posts, we decided to go with quarter inch 4x4 four four square tubing and the rest of the stuff was 11 gauge square tubing. The whole entire week while we were working outside the weather was just awfully nice. Perfect time to get these types of projects rolling. If you can get your family members to help you out the project will go a lot smoother. Make sure your main posts are perfectly straight or you'll end up with lopsided gates. Main gate posts should be buried sufficiently deep enough in the ground so that they will support all that extra weight. It's gonna look nice. Mini, 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 mini. So I went to the store to pick up some supplies and I decided to try this diamond metal cutoff blade. Just wanted to see if it was better than the standard cutoff wheels. To be honest, there was never a dull moment until I reached my third quarter inch thick post. And after that, it was no longer the sharpest tool in the shed. So I decided to never buy these blades again. I switched back to these cheap, trusty consumables and so far these cutoff wheels worked great for me. Did I mention that I don't have a whole lot of tools? I just don't make enough projects to justify a welding table. So anyways, this is gonna be my temporary welding table. So let's get these arts and crafts rolling, shall we? These heavy duty bullet hinges were only like six bucks each. Even though these quick release corner clamps look kind of cheap, but they helped me out a lot in setting up my 90 degree angles. If your project requires fast and accurate cuts, you would probably need to buy yourself a chop saw. But in my case, I've been able to do most of my cuts with angle grinders. It turns out that you don't even need a fancy and expensive saw to make your 45 degree cuts. All you really need is this $5 multi-purpose angle finder and this ain't no rocket surgery. So you basically draw a line and cut along that line and that's all folks. Without the welding table it's kind of hard to get that perfect 90 degree angle. So what I do is I start tacking on the outside corners and then move on to the inner corners to prevent warping and heat distortion. So far it worked great for me and I've been getting pretty close 90 degree angles. The bad thing about flux core wire is it creates a lot of sparks and spatter all over the place so it needs to be cleaned up. Maybe one of these days I'll learn how to TIG weld and my weld's gonna look much nicer and cleaner. When my wife saw my ugly looking welds, she gave me a grinder for Christmas and we've been using it ever since. Alright, so moving on to these rectangular horizontal support braces. They will serve two purposes. Main purpose is to prevent gates from sagging and bending from all that extra weight, resulting in a rigid and much stronger frame. Secondly, all the fence pickets will be attached to these support braces. 
One of the biggest disadvantages of working on your project in the winter is the simple fact that it gets dark much faster. So I've ended up working mostly in my garage. Once I finished welding my double swing gates, it was time to slap some hinges on the main tubular post. I've used two flat bars as spacers to create enough of a gap to insert pointy side of the hinge into that gap. For those of you who live in a windy areas and want to install electric gates, here's something to consider. Solid gates are subject to wind loading, which means your gates become a sail in the wind. If you elect to install a solid gate, be aware that it will need a heavy duty electric operator. These gates are not quite finished just yet. Now I'll need to fabricate several latches and gate stoppers, also known as drop rods or cane bolt anchors. All right, so I'm gonna put the nut on here, this piece, the metal tubing, another nut and then I'm gonna weld another 90 degree handle and that's gonna work as a latch and a handle all right so here's how this latch is gonna work it's gonna be basically and that's it put a lock right here and it's gonna be locking the door like so that's it I've made my main latch with extended handle and here's how it's going to work. I'm going to degrease all the metal. I'm going to use either mineral spirits or this stuff, the paint thinner. Basically, I'm just going to take all the oil off of uh, metal. It's going to be bare metal, so Let's clean it up. I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer just to cover the metal. And then my setup is gonna be this little spray gun. It's a high volume, low pressure gun. It's got the pressure gauge. I'm gonna set it at 30 PSI. And that's gonna be my little tiny little compressor hopefully we'll handle the job so let's do it all right here goes nothing
So I primered the gates yesterday and I let it sit overnight and now let's paint it a black color. See how that thing turns out. Unfortunately my compressor couldn't keep up. I think using regular paint brush would have been much faster. As you all may know, wooden pickets become dry and shrink over time, resulting in gaping holes in the fence. So we decided to create some privacy by cutting both edges of the picket to create an overlapping joint. So I've got two of my test pieces and this is called a ship lap, which is basically overlaps one another and creates perfect fit. And that's it. That's it. Simple as that. Groovy. Very groovy. A lot of dust though. We also wanted to see which side of the wooden picket is going to look nicer. The smooth side or the rough side. Smooth side is going to be facing the street. So let us know what you think and which side you prefer. So we're going to be using this waterproofing stain and sealer to stain the wood and have it be nice and waterproof and uh, hopefully last longer. Let's open her up. That's beautiful. Good. While working on this project, we had some setbacks. Some of the unforeseen things came up, like for example, redwood picket fence shortage due to pandemic and took too long for the stain to dry, even though it says it should be dry in 24 hours. In fact, it took a whole week to dry and it was still slimy during the installation. Okay, there we go. All of them are done. Beautiful. We used leftover rectangular tubing as a template for drilling accurately spaced holes in the wooden pickets. Beautiful. All right, we're finally done with this project, so let's see how this thing turned out. I know what you're thinking, like why this handle is so high, but I made it a little bit higher so no one can like climb it from the other side. It's not gonna be that easy to climb. <laughs> so you just open it and that's it. I also added some old inner tubes up in here, and down in that corner, just so it wouldn't hit against the other pole and be really loud whenever it was closing. It also opens up all the way like that, which is pretty cool. And it closes pretty quietly because of the rubber. And here we go. Well guys, that's it for this video and uh, let us know what you think about this project. Thank you all for watching and uh, see you later.